Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity. Whatever your spiritual orientation, you are welcome here. And because of God's grace and acceptance, we welcome one another, whatever our race or ethnicity, our political persuasions, our gender identity, our sexual orientation, how we view the world. So we're so glad you're worshiping with us this morning. Our guest preacher today is Pastor Stephen Bowman from St. Luke Church on Belmont and part of our Lakeview Lutheran Coalition. During this year, we will be hearing from all the pastors of those congregations, and we look forward to his message today. We begin our liturgy now with the gathering hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us 
and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it to the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God had second thoughts about the calamity that God had said would be done to them, and God did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers, sisters, and siblings, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who are married be as though they are not, and those who mourn as though they are not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The message goes forth to Oh, 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat bending, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As you can see, our altar and all of our vestments are set for this coming Sunday, which is the 137th anniversary of St. Luke Congregation. So I'm preaching to you in the days after Epiphany, but maybe a good reminder that each of us bring unique histories and uh, context to this work we are doing together. It's my honor to share the gospel with you and to preach today. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I was fishing with my grandpa in uh, Wisconsin. I was maybe 10 years old. My grandpa was a teacher at Concordia Seminary and a pastor. And uh, he looked at me uh, apropos of nothing and simply said, oh, Stephen, you know, the only death you ever have to be afraid of is already behind you in your baptism. And he went on fishing. What does a 10-year-old do with that? But it stays with you. Another message from a grandparent about security and refuge. I'm driving along the Major Deegan Expressway past my former cathedral, Yankee Stadium, in the Bronx. I pull up to the light on Fordham Road, and someone's waiting there to do my window. He cleans my window. He noticed that I was wearing my clerical collar, and he said, Father, Jesus Christ, I ought to be giving you money. Yes? He took out a clean rag and wiped the window again, came over to my side window and said, Father, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God bless you, Father. I got out of the car, pulled over. Tell me about yourself. And he did. He told me about a life that slips under the weight of a vision for his neighborhood that spends more money for prisons than for education in the budget. But also some of his own choices and addictions. He told me about his life. What gives you hope? I asked him. And he told me about his grandmother who took him to a river in North Carolina with their church where he was baptized. And everything this young man was going through was not choked out, but came alive at a small piece of plastic, a sign of the church, the hem of the garment where maybe it could be touched. The only death we ever have to fear is already behind us in our baptism. 
In the season of Epiphany, we saw Jesus go into the same water as that my friend in the Bronx and as my grandfather and as you and me and come out of the water secure in Jesus' identity and in the love and in being the beloved of the one who created us all. This baptismal refuge is beautifully expressed in the psalm for today, Psalm 62. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall never be shaken. And on and on it goes. And just listen to the images of security and safety and refuge just pile up. God is my hope my rock, my salvation, my stronghold, my deliverance, my honor, my strong rock, my refuge, power, and the bottom line, steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. And there's a rhythm to this psalm. It begins with a personal expression of faith, of trust, a personal expression. You alone, God, and nothing else is my rock, my security. God alone is my rock. And then, like James and John and the others, Jesus called to follow him and join him in announcing and living out the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near, the psalmist becomes a witness, an evangelist. A disciple. The psalmist moves from personal testimony to exhortation and invitation for people to trust God. From the psalm, put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. The psalmist addresses the people as evangelist and disciple. And then the psalmist turns directly to God, the rock, the refuge in prayer. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their needs. This psalm, this God, is for the asylum seeker caravan coming to us from Honduras refugees from violence, but also climate refugees fleeing the death of floods. This psalm, this God, is for all who seek refuge from adversaries, who seek relief from, in the words of our new president, our uncivil war. It's a psalm for a stronghold from the pandemic, deliverance from poverty, salvation and hope in the midst of fear and death, honor in the face of racial inequity. Beloved, what in your life causes you to seek refuge, to long to be secure and safe? Beloved, in our churches, what is causing us to fear the present and the future, or for us to seek security or shelter. For God alone I wait in silence. God is my hope, my rock, my salvation, my stronghold, my deliverance, my honor, my strong rock, my refuge. Power belongs to God, and the bottom line, steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. Is it any wonder the inauguration took on the sh shape of a church service so steeped in a longing for a presence and power deeper than the multiple crises, the constant lies, the threats, anger, fear, and social and political paralysis, seeking, yearning for a refuge? a steadfast love which might hold everything we're going through in a graceful embrace. 
we had a bit of a revival, didn't we? Jesus shared that longing at the Galilean seashore and offered the steadfast love promised from God. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. He echoed the witness of the psalmist. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. The psalm and Jesus echo an earlier offer of sanctuary and deliverance. The gospel according to Jonah begins with these words. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Our persistent God keeps calling. Forgiveness, second chances, grace comes with the refuge and sanctuary and deliverance. And God changed God's mind about the calamity in Nineveh and did not do it. There is a refuge we can trust. One whose mind is always on us. The one who calls us to repent, repented. The grace and forgiveness in Nineveh the hope, rock, salvation, stronghold, deliverance, honor, strong rock, refuge, power, and steadfast love of the psalmist. The invitation of Jesus to believe the good news sounded like this in the voice of my grandfather. Stephen, the only death you have to fear is already behind you in your baptism. And then he went on fishing. What does a 10-year-old do with that? You take it to ground zero. We saw the towers fall. The next day, I was there, accompanied by some FBI. I was afraid to be there. And when I looked at that obscene pile, I confess to you that I lost my way. But people seem to notice my collar. Father, can I tell you what I saw? Father, will you pray with me? Father, where the hell is God? But I lost my way when I looked and could already imagine those I loved in that obscene rubble buried. And then what my grandfather said to me came to me as a gift. We are all already buried in the only death we ever have to fear. Do you not know that you have been buried with Christ by baptism unto death? So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too might walk in newness of life. Sanctuary, refuge at ground zero. One of our chaplains in Brooklyn, uh, he was a chaplain in Brooklyn, uh, a firefighter chaplain, ran across the Brooklyn Bridge. He presented himself at one of the towers, said, what can I do? They asked him, did you bring your oil? He said, yes. They asked him to stand and anoint with oil in the reminder of baptism and the sign of the cross, any of the firefighters who wanted that reminder of their baptism as they rushed into the teeth of it all. And so he did. And people remembered coming down those smoky stairways and talked about those with glistening foreheads, those brave, consecrated human beings who became God's refuge and embrace even as they rushed to their own death. A Jacob's ladder with angels ascending and descending and God, our rock, our foundation, on both ends of the ladder, bearing us home, bearing with us in this world. The life of the congregations of our parish and the collective life of our parish in Lakeview is grounded where God has provided carnal experience of the presence of the song of the psalmist beautifully expressed in Psalm 62. 
For God alone I wait in silence. God is my hope, my rock, my salvation, my stronghold, my deliverance, my honor, my strong rock, my refuge at the font. I still remember baptizing my first son, holding him over the water, saying, Timothy, I, and as I plunged my hand into the water, I couldn't choke it out. You know what I'm talking about. Those unguarded moments when we look at a child asleep, when we remember a grandmother, when we think of a grandfather fishing, we are almost mugged by how much we love and how vulnerable we are to the one we love. Now think of God hovering over you and me at the font. The font anchors our life in our refuge and strength. And we go out together into our community and into the world with that baptism, with our death already behind us, to be in our own mission and ministry reminders that the kingdom of God is near, that the good news has come, and to be a reason to believe. And at the table, our life is anchored. The last time that I saw my grandma, she was in the Altenheim in St. Louis. I came with bread and wine and I was afraid she wouldn't remember me. She looked at me. I think you belong to me, she said. And then she called out my name, Stevie. Grandma, the body of Christ for you. Grandma, the blood of Christ for you. And the last thing she said, thank you for remembering me. Beloved, our life together is anchored in word and sacrament. But then we become what we eat and what we were baptized into. We become the body of Christ in the world. And because Jesus called Andrew and Peter and Zebedee and James, we don't have to do it alone. We're better together. And in the Holy Spirit's tether, we will remember that we are partners in the gospel. We were baptized into a body and God keeps calling Jonah's and Andrew's and Simon's today like the voice of a young poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, who in her own way echoed Psalm 65, we will rebuild, reconcile, and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge, battered and beautiful, when the day comes, we step out of the shade aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blossoms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Beloved, let's see it and be it here in Lakeview and beyond together. Remember, the only death we ever have to fear is already behind us in our baptism. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Responding together to Christ's call, let us offer our prayers for all in need, responding to each petition, receive our prayer. We pray for the church, especially our bishops, pastors, deacons, musicians, and servers, that God's Spirit empower all the baptism, all the baptized with wisdom to follow Christ's call. O oh God, our salvation, receive our prayer. We pray for Sunday schools and for all parish education, for teachers and participants, young and old, that God form the faithful even when classes cannot regularly meet in person. O oh God, our salvation, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth, its seas, lakes, and rivers, for their myriad creatures, and for those whose livelihood depends upon them, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide an ecological care for creation. O oh God, our salvation, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations, for our elected and appointed leaders, for racial concord in our cities, and for those who have been considered our enemies, that God lead the world into commonwealths of justice and peace. O oh God, our salvation, hear our, our prayer. We pray for relief from COVID-19, for the fearful, the sick, and the dying, for medical workers, for all who await the vaccine, for the unemployed and the quarantined, that God uphold the world's people through this time of affliction. We remember especially those we name in the chat feature or by temporarily unmuting. O oh God, our salvation, receive our prayer. We pray for this time of listening and discernment in our community, that your spirit guide and inspire us. O oh God, our salvation, receive our prayer. We join in thanksgiving for Blessed Mary, Paul, Timothy, Titus, Silas, Lydia, Dorcas, Phoebe, Thomas Aquinas, and all your people from ancient times until today who have lived and died in faith. Receive all these prayers for the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. It is our joy to have you gather with us for worship on this Lord's Day. One week from today is at a very important event in the life of our congregation, our annual meeting. And it will be on Zoom. It will enable participants from both HT Loop and HT Lakeview, our members and friends and associate members, uh, not only close enough that we could have driven to be together, but people in the Chicagoland area and across the nation. It will immediately follow our worship at 1020 a week from today. 
And about on Wednesday, you'll be receiving a packet in the mail of the materials for the annual meeting and in the e-news, some additional uh, information to help us prepare for a Zoom annual meeting. In the chat this morning, a number of things will be now starting to appear. First, if you'd like to give an offering to support our ministry, there will be a link to our giving site. If you are a newcomer, we would love to hear a little bit about you, where you live, and if you'd like to receive our weekly e-newsletter, there'll be a, um, an online form to register with us. If you've not completed the anti-racism survey, we hope you will do that. We would love to have a couple dozen more. We have a great turnout so far online, but we would love to receive a couple dozen more, particularly if you doesn't know a lot about it or you have mixed feelings. We need those responses to reflect our community as well. And finally today, very brief um, social time online check-in, we'll move to our third of our listening and discernment sessions. It's been um, three sessions. This will be the final one for those who chose Sunday. But if you've not yet signed up, we would love to again have about five dozen, five dozen more of you sign up for this. And the remaining opportunities, there are two Wednesdays coming up. It's a two Wednesday series becoming this Wednesday. And then there's an opportunity to do it all in one session, an hour and 15 minutes. And those will be both this coming Wednesday night and Monday, February 1st. So a sign up for those sessions will also appear. We continue now with our musical offering as we consider the various ways that we offer our lives, our resources, our gratitude to the further, uh, to the kingdom of God and how it is furthered through our ministries and our lives. With trust in God who nourishes and sustains us, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of the triune God who made us and loved us and goes before us be upon you and all those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God accepts us as we are, whether our hair is combed or we're still in our jammies. So let's turn on our cameras now and go to gallery view. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, you. with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Peace be with you. Peace. Christ be with you. Peace. 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 Peace.